Welcome to our next episode of Extreme Reloading. You know if you've been watching Extreme Reloading episodes, you've been watching maybe some of our channel, you probably figured out that I'm into extreme accuracy. It's actually a goal of mine to try to craft rifle ammunition so that every round goes through the same hole. Now, I know that's never going to happen. There's too many variables involved. But that's what my goal is. That's what I'm working toward. So not too long ago, I read an article from Hornady. They conducted a pretty interesting experiment. And in summary, this experiment led to the development of Hornady's ELD bullets. Extreme low drag bullets. Now the real now the real interesting thing about these bullets is the new bullet tip. It's not really your standard polymer. Uh, in fact, it's a different type of plastic that is highly resistant to heat. What they noticed is that there were some anomalies as the bullet was flying, where the ballistic coefficient that was calculated for the bullet just didn't match up what was really happening uh, on the, in that bullet's path. What they found out is that the bullet's standard traditional polymer tip was deforming in the air. And that made them question, why is this thing deforming? And what they learned there is that there can be some tremendous heat generated on the MEPLAT of that bullet. In fact, a bullet like my 220 Swift, traveling at about 4,200 feet per second, can generate about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit on the MEPLAT of the bullet. That coupled with the fact that you have about 196 pounds of pressure on the tip of the bullet at 4,200 feet per second, suggests that the bullet may indeed deform as it flies through the air. Now the real question in my mind when I read this is, gee, does it really get that hot? I mean, that's in theory that there's that much heat generated essentially by the turbulence uh, and the air pressure against it, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit is really hot. And even if it does generate a lot of heat, does the heat reside long enough to actually uh, warm up or heat up that bullet tip and then allow it to, uh, to deform? So I devised a little experiment to test and to verify the results reported by Hornady. So what I did is I took a propane torch and propane can achieve about 3,500, 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit right here. But I figured if I ran the bullet through the flame a couple inches away, that would give it uh, enough time to cool a little bit and uh, maybe approximate about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is not going to be a perfect experiment because I couldn't test the actual temperature of that flame. I don't have anything that can measure 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. The other thing that I did is I wanted to make sure I passed the bullet through this flame fast enough because a bullet is not going to be experiencing that heat for very long. So let's think about it. 4,200 feet per second, that's 1,400 yards. No, you're not going to shoot 1,400 yards with a 220 Swift. Maybe 600 yards. Um, so that's a pretty extreme test. One second of flight, one second of uh, that bullet experiencing about 1400, maybe 2000 degree Fahrenheit. Is that enough to soften up that polymer tip? Or is this more marketing myth? This is the Nosler Varmageddon bullet before we start any sort of before we start any sort of experiment on it as you can see nothing comes off it's not soft run it through a little bit hmm 
Definitely deformed it. Now I'll try this again. The Hornady ELD bullet. Not soft at all before any heat applied to it. We'll just pass this through again. Nothing. You see it took some heat, but it's... holding it together a whole lot better. A little bit of heat applied to a traditional polymer tip bullet softens it up almost immediately. And I can see that it probably would deform in flight, thereby affecting its trajectory uh, and its accuracy. The ELD bullet though, I'm amazed. It did not deform, it blackened, but it did not deform at all. So thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading.